honor to call you dad. I am forever in debt to your priceless advice. And all of these boys, they need to listen. I have to say you really ticked me off when I first listened, but I think it's because you speak the truth. My dad's been preaching your words, and I have to say, to me, you are a god, my friend. I feel a little guilty when they're uh, when they're sweet, nice, innocent, take care of themselves, and use them. You know what I always say, if sex is not painful and humiliating, what's the point? I've been listening to your show for two weeks, man. You are just speaking the truth about everything, dude. I, I would give you mad props. I be listen to, like, hip-hop stations a lot, and, you know. I take my break from it just listen to talk radio. Then I came to your show, and I'm like, damn. Everything you say is just, like, it's just an eye-opener, man. I'm telling you, I give you mad props. I have children in my life. I don't need to have one. I have a nephew who's six and a half years old who's fantastic, and I've got a great relationship with him, but I didn't have to teach him how to wipe his ass. You see, I've got the best of all worlds. But listen, love, there's something meaningful in teaching a child how to wipe his ass. I had lost uh, contact with her for four months. I went out, found her living on the streets with her ex-boyfriend. She has a history of heroin abuse. And, uh, uh, yeah, and, and let me guess, you didn't know anything about that. Uh, until two months into the relationship. And because you're a complete pussy, you stayed with her, despite the fact that that was a big red flag that you should have taken as a sign that this is an irresponsible individual. She worked very hard with me. Blah, blah, blah. You are Captain save a Ho, and you know it. Now Once someone has like destroyed her. your soul, it's time to rise from the ashes and become the a-hole that you can be. You are better off pumping and dumping. You don't have no control. Now, pal, you have total control once you realize that you don't give a rat's ass about any of these females. They are sperm depositories. If women are sperm repositories... Not repositories, dear. Depositories. Repository depository. Well, they're, well, they're, they're two different words. Look them up. Uh, dear, if you would ever read a dictionary difference between okay, those two okay, words Mr. but you won't but know that if your opinion i'm mr literate in this call I'll, I'll call me mr literate darling because that's what i am what's in words nothing um for me a seven-figure income how about you <laughs> are you jewish if you've seen these photos from lindsey lowen not to mention uh, the vomiting the whole thing i mean like do you want to have sex with her at this point seriously i would have done lindsey lohan when she was 17 and breathtaking and hot now she's all drugged up and skinny. She's just not what she was. But, I mean, beyond that, if I caught her in a night where she hadn't vomited yet, then sure. I'm reflecting on the picture of her passed out in the car. That's what she was. I totally do Lindsay Lohan. Even with vomit on her breath and everything. Absolutely. It's not like she crapped her pants. Maybe I draw the line there. From Paramount Pictures in Hollywood, it's Flash Friday. Yeah, I would like to do Lindsay Lohan. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is. Not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800. 866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio on this Flash Friday 2007. That's right. Headlights on wherever you may be. Headlights on if you're a Tom Likas listener. Now is the time to turn all the headlights on. Turn them on. And ladies, if you see somebody with the headlights on, that's a loyal Tom Likas listener. It is your job to... Uh, Return the loyalty, return the respect. If we flash you, you flash us. If you see our headlights on, show us your rack. That's not asking very much, is it? I didn't think so. 
We'd like to get a look at your knockers that will show your loyalty to the Tom Likas show. It's uh, always amazing. Look around you when we uh, announce uh, that it's time to put the headlights on. How many people are doing it at the same time you are? Take a look around you. Look at all the people turning their headlights on right now. Right now. Love that. Love that. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas show. Anything goes here. Anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. TMZ.com today, a uh, such a heartwarming picture of Alex Rodriguez and his wife, Cynthia, walking hand in hand. Alex looking like he's got a gun to his head. <laughs> he pretty much does. <laughs> of this photo. You know, once you get the New York Post following you, you're not going to get any sleep. They're going to be in your garbage cans. They're going to be in your dreams. They're going to be under your bed. They're going to be in the closet. They're going to be in every, every building you go to, every restaurant you uh, eat at. They're going to be everywhere. They're going to be going through the dumpster after you're done with dinner. That's where they're going to be. <laughs> oh, baby. You don't want to be in the radar screen of the New York Post. Unbelievable. Totally love that. Speaking of baseball, stuff I totally love seeing. I don't know if you saw this today. The Pittsburgh Pirates beat the Chicago Cubs today, but uh, more importantly, pitching against the Pirates today is the hapless and expensive free agent Carlos Zambrano. This guy ain't cheap. Well, I guess at some point in the game there was a passed ball, and you know what that means, the catcher let it roll back to the backstop or whatever. And we're not really sure if that was the cause of this, but um, in the dugout, Zimbrano and his catcher, Michael Barrett, got into a heated conversation, which resulted in Zimbrano taking some shots. I mean, like... He cut Michael Barrett's lip. These two had a fist fight in the dugout. They both got sent home before the end of the Chicago Cubs game today. And that game, of course, was followed by the requisite volatile press conference with the manager of the Cubs, Lou Pinella, who's wondering, I came out of retirement for this? Are you kidding me? The latest guy with the ego big enough to think he can make the Chicago Cubs win. The Chicago Cubs cannot win. That's it. They can't. How many managers of the year have they hired? They 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 ate right through Dusty Baker, and now they're heading for Lou Pinella, and they still stink. Totally amazing. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week, anything you think we should have talked about. You can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, we kick your ass the hell off the air. All you do is call our toll-free telephone number. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Coming up next, your telephone calls on this Flash Friday. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. You two are going to be flashing on the way down? If we see headlights. <laughs> Well, that didn't take long, did it? We have a listener. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> wow. Listen to that. Fresh Friday has begun. Oh, my God. Hot tub. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's Flash Friday on the Tom Likey Show. Tom Likas Show, Flash Friday at 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Frank. Hello. Hello. Frank. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Pretty good. Good, good. Uh, first time caller. I've been listening for about, uh, I'd say, a year and a half now. Keep it up. Yep. Uh, so I plan to. 
Uh, just want to let you know I'm right here on the 605, just passing the 5, and right when it turned 3 o'clock, my looks like my rear view mirror just lit up with headlights. Are you serious? Yeah. I love that. Oh, yeah, it was funny. I have a friend. He's on the freeway, too. He doesn't believe in uh, Flash Friday. He listens, but he hasn't seen anything yet, but hopefully he'll see something today. Well, that whole area, the 605, the 60, the 91, the 10, uh, as you're heading out east of the city, I mean, that's very fertile ground for Flash Friday. That yeah. 91 freeway all the way out to Riverside is crazy. Oh, yeah. I'm actually coming from the 405 down all the way north on the 605. Wow. Yeah. All right, well. Frank, leave those lights on. You'll get lucky soon. Thanks a lot, Tom. Could you take me out Kobe style? Of course I can, Frank. Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, there I breathe. She's so special to me. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Now, Ryan was on the show previously, and before he tells us the, the latest on his story, he's going to remind us of what we talked about the first time we got on the air. Hi, hi, Ryan. How are you? How you doing, Professor? Doing great. I just wanted to give you a call and an update that I had. Um, first of all, I just... Uh, well, before we, what, before we get to the update, for. yeah, let's talk about what you did originally on the show. Originally, I did something stupid. I'm 19 years old. I got into a relationship, uh, got an apartment, put it in my name. Obviously, I, I got the utilities, everything put in my name. Uh, she moved in with me. And I uh, made that mistake already, but uh, so that was my main mistake. And then uh, so what I did was I called you up just asking for your advice, and obviously you gave me the advice you gave everyone else. You know, you just you need to get out of it. If you're 19, you need to be, you know, getting what you get, not, not you know, just sticking around with one girl. So I took your advice, pondered it over for a little bit, and then uh, you had a good show on not too long ago about how to get, because I didn't didn't know how I could get her out of my house. So what I did was you had the the thing about the utility show, how you cut off uh, utilities and how how is someone going to live at a house without TV, cable, phone, anything like that, right? Right, no electricity, no hot water. Oh, yeah, because uh, obviously I was the idiot when I moved in. I, uh, I I put everything in my name because obviously I make the cheddar, so I have to uh, I have to put it down. So I put the deposit down on cable, everything like that. So basically what I did was I, uh, went, I, I moved in with one of my buddies, and then I, uh, first I shut off the cable, the phone, and the Internet. Because she goes to school, she needs that stuff to, uh, to you know, to get through life. So I just took that stuff off immediately, and as soon as it got shut off, my phone would not stop getting calls. What, what the hell happened? Where are you? What's going on? So then I shut off the utility bill. Wait, 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 wait. Before we get to that, what did you tell her? What did I tell her? When she said, what's going on, what did you say? I told her that I didn't want a relationship anymore. I'm 19 years old. I should be able to get more ass in the toilet seat. I'm not a bad-looking guy. I make good money. I go to school. You know, I got my own place now. So, you know, since what I did, what was that? I didn't say anything. Go ahead. Sorry about that, Tom. So what I'm gonna, what I did was I just shut off all the utilities, and then finally she, uh, she ended up moving out on her own without me having to do anything. So my uh, tactic worked. Your tactic worked better than I could have ever imagined. See, it, and you didn't it have... Went, it was so streamlined, because I, I made the, the stupid mistake of putting everything in my name, but it, it turned out to be a godsend, you know, because now, now I got her out without any uh, hassle whatsoever. Right, no 911, no exactly. threats. By the way, be sure to change all your locks now. Oh, get that, that was, that's the first thing I'm going to do. i got to go over to the local Home Depot and get myself some, uh, some master locks. Did she ever call you after she moved out or right before she moved out? She, she, right before, she wanted me to pay for the U-Haul because that she wanted most of the stuff in the apartment was hers. So I just was like, you know what? I don't really give a, I, I, don't, I don't care anymore, so just take your, take your crap and get out. And now I just party with my friends. I get more ass in the toilet seat. How great is that, Ryan? My, I live my life for me now, not anybody else. I, I love, love that. I, I, I've only, it's only been like this for about two weeks, but having some fun, you know, just doing everything, and I, I just really appreciate the, the advice that you gave me. 
All right, I'm glad it worked for you, and I'd love to hear from other people who turn the utilities off and see how that worked for them. Well, just because the people that, you know, that that, uh, that call your show, I, like I heard some of the other, you know, kids my age call in and they don't take your advice because, you know, they don't think that it's the real way to do it. But, you know, I have I have an extra, you know, 500 bucks a week because I don't have a girlfriend. I don't have to take her out and, and buy $12 drinks for both of us, you know? That's right. Exactly. I, I buy my $12 drink for myself and I and then just, if you throw enough bait out there, something's bound to stick, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's my you know if you go up to 20, 20 random chicks at a bar and you hit on you know you know all of them two of them are uh, bound to dig what you're saying so yeah that, that's that's my opinion on how everything works I just wanted to give you a quick call say thank you very much and everything that's going on thanks for changing the life Tom Ryan thank you for that heartwarming story really great to hear that I told you boys if you can't get her to leave turn off the utilities. Just turn them off. Move them with a buddy. She will leave. 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Eddie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What's going on there, Tom? Not much, Eddie. Hey, I wanted to uh, thank you for having this show. It's great. Great advice. Thank you. My comment was uh, there's this movie that's coming out today. It's being released today. It's, it's called Knocked Up. Yes. Oh. What's going on with Hollywood, Tom? Why why do they got to promote that crap? Well, what is it you're upset about? I haven't seen the movie yet. I do plan to see it this weekend, but uh, what what are you upset about? It, it, well, it's just basically about a guy that picks up on a chick, gets her pregnant, and it becomes this big old nice fantasy story. Exactly what it's not. Well, that's not what I've heard about the movie. Um, <laughs> uh, the, the, the people who made this movie made The 40-Year-Old Virgin which was not a fantasy story at all. It had uh, quite a bit of vulgar uh, humor in it, the way I like it. And um, I'm hearing this movie is uh, pretty much the same thing. And some of the same people who are in 40-Year-Old Virgin are in this movie. Well, yeah, no, the acting and, and, and all that, but it's just the overall plot, how you know how he has to stick around and he has to play with the uh, girlfriend's kid. And, and, you well, know, we haven't seen it yet. I mean, you know, Eddie, I, uh, my plan is to see it. And then judge for myself. Now, I heard a conservative radio talk show host today refer to this as a pro-life movie, which I, I find hysterically funny because what the two people did uh, to get knocked up in the movie uh, certainly wouldn't pass muster with most Christian groups, most conservative groups. Uh, it's so funny how they're willing to overlook that and tell people to go see this movie because it's pro-life. That's that's fine, but I think I don't I don't think the average person is going to look at it that way. I think they're going to be looking at it. Oh, there's a cute little story. She gets knocked up. Well, I read that this 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 movie. In fact, if you read the L.A. Times review of it today, it specifically said the movie's from a guy's point of view. I don't know. I guess I'll have to go home and read that as soon as I get off. Or off just read it on. It's on the L.A. Times website. Read the review today. Yeah, I'll do that when I get home. But I don't know. I just. I just think this is going to promote something totally different. I hope it doesn't. I hope it really shows uh, what happens um, in a situation like that. But well, it is supposed to be a comedy, so I can't imagine that uh, it's all that easy or all that good. I just think it's going to promote women to, to have that fantasy of, oh, yeah, I could get him to knock me up and, 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 and stick Yeah, but the guy, the, guy, the guy is like a schlub. That's, that's part of the joke. She's this hot chick who's, uh, who, who works in television, and she ends up with this frat boy who has no ambition, I've, and, and it doesn't look like it's all that much of a, a dream for her, if, from what I can tell in the reviews. I'm just going off basically off the commercials, that, uh, and also to the interview that they had yesterday, on another radio show uh, in the morning. Uh, they didn't really get into the specifics of the movie, but they did talk about how he has to go out and play with the kid, uh, the friend's kid, and he has to try to stick around. And, and, and Well, it's and not that he has supporting. to. It's that he, he thinks that's what he's supposed to do, and so he tries to do it. That's my understanding of the plot. I would love to see the ending, but uh, I don't think I'll go watch it. Well, I'm going to go see it.
because uh, Judd Apatow is spectacular. He's like really one of the hottest uh, hottest names in in movie comedies today, and he has produced or written some of the the biggest hits. He's been involved uh, in a lot of big movies. I guess I'll have to check in with you on Monday, see what you think of it. But uh, as far as the acting is concerned, I mean, I think they're great actors. I saw forty forty year old version. I think they're all great actors, and I think uh, uh, as far as comedy, I think they're the right people to do it. But as far as the overall subliminal message that is on the uh, on the screen is is not not well. We don't know what message is on the screen because you haven't seen it, and neither have I. Then I'll check with you on Monday. All right, do it. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. It's David on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. I just have a question for you. I've heard. Uh, I guess it was a show. Oh, probably a couple of months ago. You had callers that were asking what you would do if you were to get a girl pregnant. And I remember you saying that, well, number one, you take every precaution. You do use condoms. Uh, you make sure she's on the pill. You have discussions with her regarding if she were to get pregnant, is she willing to abort, et cetera, et cetera. But I was just curious to know, if you took every precaution that you, you can, and if she gave you every answer that you wanted to hear, whether it be the truth at the time or a lie, if the scenario were to happen where she did get pregnant, even though you took all of the precautions, what would you do in that situation? I would fulfill whatever legal responsibilities I had, and that's it. Okay. I mean, I was just curious to know if, after doing everything that you say you do, would you have any legal recourse? I didn't think so, but I'm... No, there is none. Uh, getting pregnant is the one thing in America where you could commit fraud. You could say I'm on the pill and not be. You could say I'm, uh, I've am i had a tubal ligation and then not have had one. Uh, right. You can say uh, the doctor said I can't get pregnant and it could be a lie. Right. You can right. lie about all of that and it's completely legal and then it's completely legal to come to the guy who knocked you up and take his money. And say pay up. That's right. Yeah, okay, well, I appreciate you taking my call. Like I said, I remember you discussing this with other people and, and you know, you telling them about all of the things that you do and, and having that discussion with her. And my first thought was, well, what if she just tells you everything you want to hear, it miraculously happened, and, and then, you know, then what do you do? So. Well, you have no choice. I'm a public figure. I can't run and hide. Right. Uh, right. So I would have to pay whatever I'm told I have to pay. But I would have nothing to do with the woman. Oh, absolutely. Or the child. I would just say, here's your money. You got what yep. you wanted. Don't ever call me. Don't talk to me. Stay away right. from me. Right, right. All right, well, listen, I do appreciate you taking the call. My wife is actually right here next to me. She wanted me to tell you that uh, she enjoys listening to the show. You make her laugh uh, on the ride home every day. Well, thank her for, thank her for me. I appreciate that. Um. Being totally honest, in the recent past, and this is not in the last uh, few weeks or month or whatever, but in the recent past, I have to say thank you to somebody out there, and she knows who she is, somebody who I was occasionally seeing, because I wasn't really seeing anybody regularly. At one point, she had told me that... Uh, she gave up on the idea of having kids. She'd gotten married. The marriage didn't work out. So she got it annulled or she got divorced or whatever. And uh, we hooked up again after she uh, after she was done being married. And uh, after she had told me that uh, she'd given up on the idea of having kids, it was like, all right, well, let's press ahead. So we did. We would see each other from time to time. And then the last time we saw each other, she said to me the following. She said, uh, and obviously she'd been all over the road. She said, well, I'm not trying to have any kids, but if I get pregnant, I'm not having an abortion. She said that to me. And I just want to say thank you for saying that. Because now the result is I won't be able to see you anymore. And uh, thank you for not trapping me or holding me hostage. Thank you for giving me that information. I wish more women would be up front like that and say it just like that. And boys, if you hear a woman say something like that, do not assume that she's uh, she's lying. Do not assume that uh, she'll change her mind or that you will persuade her in case of emergency. When a woman tells you, if I get pregnant, I'm having the baby, 
Um, but from my point of view, that's when it's time to say it's been very nice knowing you, and thank you for being so honest. I don't even have to be a jerk about it. I really appreciate the fact that she told me that that's how she felt. Now, people who say that, they want an accident to happen. They would love an accident to happen, and they're pretty much letting you know that. Almost to the point where I don't think it's an accident anymore. I mean, uh, if you let an accident happen, is it an accident? If you get in the car and you drive right into a wall, but you know you're doing it, is that a car accident? I don't know. Anyway, I had to stop seeing this person. Nice person, funny person, fun to hang out with. And I liked a lot of things about her. But she wants to have a baby, and I don't, and that's that. But uh, rather than being a jerk and just uh, drop-kicking her through the uprights, I, I want to say publicly, thank you. Thank you for telling me that. Because now you can move on and find somebody who wants to be a sperm donor, and I can move on and enjoy my life. you got to salute women like that. You do. Right, it's Flash Friday, wide open telephones. More of your telephone calls are coming up. Tom, Tom Likas, 1 800 5800. Tom. Hello? 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 The Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, the Tom Likas Show at 1 800 5800. Tom. Wide open telephones on this Flash Friday. Danielle, hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. I just wanted to call and say that that last guy that called, he's talking out of his butt about that movie, Knocked Up. Yeah. I just came back from it, and trust me, that is no woman's fantasy. That's not going to make women want to run out to a bar and have a one-night stand with some guy and get pregnant. I would think it would be a pro-abortion movie, frankly. Like, uh, imagine this is what would happen if you decided to press ahead and have the kid with somebody you got drunk with and got knocked up by, and the guy turns out to be a dork. The guy looks like a better version of Screech from Saved by the Bell, and the girl is beyond gorgeous. She's totally hot. So if anything, this is a guy fantasy movie, not a girl fantasy well, movie. Well, that's what I was thinking. I read the review today in the L.A. Times, and it was like, it was pretty obvious. I mean, first of all, the 40-year-old virgin was not a chick flick. No, not I saw that. That was not a chick flick. And uh, Judd Apatow does these really vulgar, funny movies. Vulgar isn't even, like, I can't even put it like vulgar. It was... It was good, though. It was good. You'll love it. Well, that's the thing. I, I'm no prude. Vulgar is fine by me. I think it's great no. if it's funny. The whole theater was, like, roaring laughing. Like, that was one of the best movies I've seen in a long time. Really? But in, but in no way. It was, like, laugh out loud, totally funny. But in no way do I feel like going out to a bar tonight and hooking up with some guy <laughs> and then, you know, going, oh, yeah, let's let's spend the rest of our lives together. <laughs> No. no, especially when the guy looks like the guy. No, no. And that's a rule for the women listening. Don't drink a lot tonight because that could happen to you, and you don't want that guy to be the guy you end up with. Trust me. <laughs> uh, but for the guys, if you can get a girl like that drunk, ooh, man. I, re I recommend it on this show regularly, <laughs> as you know. Yes. <laughs> I know. All right, so there's a thumbs up from you for uh, for Knocked Up. Definitely, and it takes a lot to make me laugh, and it's going to do the same for you. Good. I, I'm definitely going to see it this weekend. Great. Thanks, Tom. Take, thanks for taking my call. Thank you, Danielle. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Justin on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Just, uh, Tom, how you doing? I'm okay. Um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the phone conversation that you had with um, Marie. Marie, which was not her real name. She was the wife of a major right. league ball player. Yes. I, I, I mean, it was just, it was such an amazing piece of broadcasting. I mean, the, the, the information that you didn't even, you weren't even trying to get it out of her. She just, you know, kind of opened up her heart. Clearly, it's always, it's, clearly it's always, she wanted to tell that story. It's always, that's, I, I, I really like your show. And, uh, that's my favorite part of, of of your program when you when you start to get into the therapy aspect of you know men and women you you not only understand it but you have um, you know such a, a much better way of delivering that information than you know than a therapist because you know you're obviously a broadcaster. I'm a broadcaster who's had six years of therapy. 
So rather than studying how to do therapy, I've been through therapy, so I know how it works. Right, right. Do you think that she was telling the truth? Yes, 100%. You know, she re revealed a lot of information about herself. I mean, she I, I think I remember that she said her parents lived in Southern California. She went to Maui. She had two dogs. She didn't have kids. I mean, there are not a lot of, you know, wives of, of Southern California baseball teams out there that fit that description. Well, you would have to pay really close attention when they tell you about these ballplayers. Um, and, of course, keep in mind, uh, uh, I don't know where he's from. Right. I, I, she's from Southern California, but we don't know where he's from. Well, she said he was away right now. And so, well, I got the impression that I inferred from it that she was the wife of a Southern California. And actually, you know, she's pro he's probably an American League baseball player. He's probably plays for the Angels because she sounds like she's the designated hitter. Well, at one point, um, <laughs> at one point she was. Well, talking... I mean, I was making a joke, but I was kind of serious. Well, too. but 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 no, but you 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 were actually on the verge of something there because uh, at one point during the conversation, she said that one of the women who he was dallying with had sent him a text message asking if he was going to fly her to Texas. Oh, I missed that part. So that could indicate an American League player, but there's also a number one. There's a National League team in Texas, the Houston Astros, and there's interleague play. So that really doesn't tell us anything anymore. Right. But it's certainly something I thought about when she said it. Did you have to talk to her during the breaks? No. No, and I try not to do that because what happens is if I talk to people during the breaks, they tend to tell you stuff you'd rather they tell on the air. Right, you use up some of your material. So I let Dean uh, talk to them off the air during the breaks, I, which maybe you'll advise, but that's what I do. Yeah, I know that. I, I mean, it was it was such a great interview. Well, Dean, get to give Dean credit, he did find her and make sure that I uh, noticed her and put her up on the air and uh, kept her on the air with me so we could get the whole story. Yeah, but he put me on too. So what does that say? Yeah, well, I know that's the thing. It's hit and miss with Dean. You know, I, I was wondering, uh, I, I actually wanted to call in, and, and I was all kind of charged up at first to hear this, you know, this caller say, oh, you know, she's basically just sleeping with this guy for the, for you know, for the lifestyle. But, you know, I really felt sorry for her in the end, and I hope, I hope she leaves the guy. I, I think if you're married and you don't have kids, there's absolutely zero reason, you know, to stay in that kind well, of Well, on top of that, she, if she's been married 10 years in California... Uh, you're guaranteed alimony for life. And she but, said she didn't even want that. But, you know, Tom, I mean, you've been married and, and, and divorced. I mean, I mean, is the money really anything in comparison to having to split a child or kind of custody or, or that whole mess? I mean, bringing a third person into it who's, you know, not even an adult. Yeah, well, again, in that case, this is really irrelevant because uh, there are no children involved. Right. But, I mean, is she, it really, uh, the people who are calling her a gold digger, I think yeah, only had, yeah. they only had part of the story because in reality, she's already got the gold. I mean, whether she stays or goes, she's entitled to 50% of everything he's made in the last 10 years. But it's it's so, I mean, that is 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 just brings home your point of always, you know, not getting involved with people and not and she maybe she was at first a gold digger and now she's she got involved for all the wrong reasons all the reasons that you tell people not to get involved well keep in people. mind also when she married him he was in the minor leagues making a minimal salary oh wow she's probably entitled to some of his retirement money too then oh no, she's entitled to retirement money social security but i'm convinced having talked to her for over an hour that day that uh, that's not her aim here. She's got bigger issues she's dealing with. She's. Uh, I, she... I wonder if she was on any kind of medication. I mean, I know she said, I heard her say a couple of times, Tom, I really need to get into therapy. But, you know, she sounded like she was kind of like on maybe Valium or something or some kind of some kind of sedative. That wasn't my impression. Uh, my impression uh, of her was that she was sad or depressed yeah. and that she uh, really wanted to tell this story. And I wanted her to tell it, so I, I wanted to give her the space to tell the story. And it was really cool. I think I think probably you know, I think it's probably her first step. I mean, you you can't say. I mean, you know, she was anonymous, but you know, there aren't. I mean, it's a very very finite number of people. Even every single major league player, their wife 
who doesn't have kids, that's not that many people. I mean, I think that's her first step in, you know, in voicing, hey, I, I want out. Right. And she did say that she'd had an epiphany uh, during the conversation. And uh, I do think that she's afraid to leave. She's afraid of what she'd be facing. She has never lived on her own before. Well, it's that, that old saying, I mean, the fear, I mean, what is it? the evil you know is is better than the evil you don't know. Well, this is why I'm always encouraging young people to spend some years on their own and not to go from mommy and daddy's house right into a marriage or a relationship. Uh, you need to learn how to be by yourself. You know, kind of to change the subject a little, that last caller who asked you five times if you got a girl pregnant and what you would do. If you had a vasectomy, would you be as concerned the woman was on birth control? Would I be as concerned? Yeah, I mean, would you care? I mean, if you had a vasectomy, I don't know, maybe you do. I don't know, you haven't told me. But. Well, I don't like the idea that someone would be trying to trick me into a pregnancy. Right. Uh, and certainly if someone tried to do that, and then they found out I had a vasectomy after they tried to accuse me of being a parent, um, I would be very, very angry and never want to talk to them again. Sure, sure, I know, I know, but... But I just wondered, and I, I'm because I think vasectomies would be such a great thing. I actually think you should, you know, give some away on your show. Well, there are liability issues. It's something over oh. the years we've talked about. Unfortunately, anytime you give any kind of medical procedure away on the air, how about you, know, you give a coupon for five hundred dollars off or a thousand dollars? There you off? go. Yeah, something like that. Well, you know what? I'd love to do something like that because I would love to see our boys. Uh, get vasectomies, especially the ones who want to get them and are told by doctors that they're too young or they have to get the approval of mommy, mommy yeah, being the uh, overbearing yeah. girlfriend or wife. I would like to get these guys vasectomies because they really want them. Yeah, it's 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 great. I mean, you can that that's also a really. It's a, I've I've been involved in funny situations with women when they found out, you know, after the fact I had a vasectomy. It's it's such a neat it's it's an interesting thing because when they find out that you've had a vasectomy, they kind of look at you well like you're completely useless. You can't provide me with a child, even though I've told them in the past. You know I'm I'm not going to have kids. That's why I had a vasectomy. And it's weird once they find out. Oh, well, you just told me you you didn't want to have kids. You didn't tell me you actually had a vasectomy. I don't I don't know what the difference is. Yeah, but, really. Well, the difference is she can't trick you into having a baby. Right, right. That's the difference. Ugly, <laughs> ugly, but true. Thanks a lot for the call. I appreciate it. Let's go to Brian on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Brian? All right, Paul on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Dad. Hey. How are you doing? What about the Cubs, man? <laughs> Cubs are going down in flames again this year. Yes, sir. They almost made the World Series that year back, however long that was, and that kid cut, dropped the ball, whatever. That's right. And uh, didn't he have to leave Chicago, like, forever? <laughs> yeah, I know. I think he actually moved out or something, I think. I think he did. I think I heard that. Yeah. And this off season, it sounds like they're going somewhere. They get a problems with Soriano. Then they go ahead and get Lou Pinello. It sounds like they're going uphill. They're not going anywhere. No, well, they only hired Dusty Baker, and it was the same thing when they hired Dusty Baker. Yeah. I mean, look, um, I don't know who the uh, the trainer is on this team. I don't know who the pitching coach is. But when you take these two pitchers, Kerry Wood and Mark Pryor, and screw them up permanently that way, somebody's head should roll. Oh, definitely. I know. They need to at least trade some of these guys. I think Zabrano should leave for what he did because he made the hit, you know. Well, now he has to go out there and play with Michael Barrett again. Uh, how's, how's that going to work? I have no idea, but Lou Pinnell is going to start kicking some ass soon, it sounds like. Well, he, he was starting to lose it at the press conference today. He finally had to get up and leave, and you, if you've ever seen a Lou Pinnell press conference, you know what that's like. Yeah. But have you seen the video of this uh, little incident yet? Uh, yeah, I watched it live. Yeah. Yeah, the two of them going at it in the dugout, and they were sent home before the end of the game. Just amazing. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Tom at blowmeuptom.com or if you'd like to hear our show streaming live any old time between 3 and 8 p.m. Pacific time go to blowmeuptom.com and click the listen live button that's blowmeuptom.com The Tom Likas Show